Now, providing it's clear, many eyes will be on the skies tonight as Professor Brian Cox returns to BBC Two in Stargazing Live. Well, we've sent our science correspondent, David Gregory Kumar, out to a little bit of stargazing of his own. David, uh, what are you looking for tonight? Well, Mary, we're here at the University of Birmingham Telescope on the edge of the city, and we're going to be issuing viewers with a comet challenge in just a few moments. But first, there is a secret stargazing superstar here in the Midlands. He invented something that revolutionised amateur astronomy, and then he gave it all away for free. This is no ordinary Coventry shed. This is the workshop of the man who revolutionised amateur astronomy. How did you get into astronomy? What started your interest? I started about five years old when my dad took me outside in the, in the warm evening air and he says, look at that star sun going behind that pole. And it went behind the pole and it came out the other side and I was absolutely gobsmacked that the stars actually moved in the sky. 40 years ago, building your own telescope was a big part of amateur astronomy, but John Wall was deeply unhappy with the design of a traditional telescope focusing mechanism. Focusing is one of the hardest things with astronomy, and anything you can do to make the focusing easier is going to make the enjoyment of astronomy and looking, looking at the stars through a telescope much better. So John created this, the Crayford Focuser. It allows cheap, smooth focusing of a telescope and it was an idea that swept the world. Telescopes will be sold with a Crayford Focuser and people will sell them second hand as well. So there's quite a, quite a big market in second hand equipment. So it's really revolutionised amateur astronomy because it's given amateurs the chance to do some really top quality imaging, for example. That's where the Crayford Focuser has been really popular. So did his invention make him millions? That was a gift of the community. I don't get any royalties for it, but I don't care. It doesn't worry me too much. The fact is, it's all over the planet now. They're turning about by their millions in Southeast Asia, you know. Tonight, Stargazing Live will celebrate astronomy, so it's appropriate that we celebrate John Wall and his invention too. Now get a pen and paper, we're going to have a web address for you because you're going to be taking part, we hope, in our Comet Challenge. So let's talk comets with Graham Smith from the University of Birmingham. Graham, Comet Ison was in the news over Christmas, wasn't it? That's right. It was a very exciting story because it was plunging literally straight towards the sun, passed through its atmosphere, and sadly it uh, disintegrated due to the force of gravity and heat from the, from the sun. We got orange a video from a satellite that showed it happening, but you took a still picture as well here at the university didn't you, with this telescope. That's right. Our first uh, observation with our new telescope was of Comet Ison, and uh, yeah, some uh, students joined me before breakfast one morning, and uh, surprisingly, we had we had a really good time <laughs> at such an early hour. <laughs> now, Comet Ison has gone, but Comet Lovejoy is in the sky, and this is our Comet Challenge for our viewers, isn't it? That's right. It's a fantastic challenge. It's right on the edge of being observable with the naked eye. I expect that it's you need actually binoculars to see it from a light polluted suburban back garden, say in the West Midlands. If where it's really dark, you should be able to see it with the naked eye. So I really want to find out from the people of the West Midlands if they can see it. Thank you very much for that, Graham. So that is our Comet Challenge. We want you to look for Comet Lovejoy and tell us whether you can see it with the naked eye or with binoculars, and that'll give an idea about light pollution here in the Midlands. If you go to my blog at bbc.co.uk slash David Gregory Kumar, you'll find details of the Comet Challenge. You'll find more details of stargazing, stargazing live events all over the Midlands near you, which are happening over the next three nights, and also a bit more about John Wall, that unsung hero of amateur astronomy. Back to you, Mary. Thanks very much, David. And if you want to follow the rest of the BBC's coverage, uh, switch over to BBC Two from 8 o'clock this evening.